Hey kids, it's Uncle Drew. Happy New Year. We're going to run over two movies today, so stay focused, stay with me, and I'll try to make it as fast as possible. These are both Disney animated classics. The first one is Beauty and the Beast, then we're going to talk a little bit about The Hunchback of Notre Dame. You may already see where I'm going with this, because the two stories are kind of comparable. First, we've got the uh, Beauty and the Beast story. Uh, you start out with this guy. He's got an epic nickname, The Beast. I mean, who wouldn't want a nickname like that? You know, he's, he's this enormous lion man in a giant mansion full of talking shit, like talking toilet, talking clock, talking fleshlight, which I think is a little bit creepy, but, you know, if Disney wants to go there, that's cool. Uh, he also, you know, he has that slick um, George Washington wardrobe and everything, and everything's going cool for him. You know, he's this giant lion dude running around his mansion, and, and the fucking clock's, like, singing him to sleep and shit. And then this horrible hag, this this hatchet-faced fucking harpy woman moves in and changes everything. Like, nothing about the beast who is fucking epic. His bros were probably high-fiving him as he drank an entire fucking keg. But now she's moved in. Nothing about his life is good enough. And she changes everything about him. Like, how can they teach these lessons to kids? Like, hey, women, if you don't like your guy who's named the beast or the gooch or whatever, and he's fucking awesome, just change everything about him and make him ballroom dance. The only thing she left him at the end was his George Washington wardrobe, which actually looks pretty ridiculous when you're not a giant lion man. I'll tell you this, if I was a giant lion man and I had a fucking, you know, a mansion or a palace, castle, whatever, full of, like, talking stuff, I would charge the villagers to come in and I'd make my shit sing to them. I'd be like, check out my coffee pot, it sounds like murder she wrote. And then as they're leaving, I'd put my lion balls on their forehead. Lion balls. Okay, second movie we're going to talk about is The Hunchback of Notre Dame. I was a little bit frustrated with The Hunchback of Notre Dame because, well, you know the story. Here's this dude. He's like hideously deformed but affable. You know, he, he's a likable dude, except nobody wants to get to know him because he's like all thug faced. He's in love with the gypsy and, you know, he sits up in a tower singing all day. And the reason I got frustrated with this movie is because. I could have solved that shit in like two seconds. There would have been like no angst on Quasimodo's part. If you're ugly, but a good singer, and people like you, and you, you know, you have like a boner for gypsies, move to Ireland. It's not tough. He's so smart and so charismatic, they probably would have made him president or, you know, head pig farmer, whoever runs that fucking shithole of a country. Anyway, that's my time. We're going to wrap it up right there. I hope you go out and watch these two movies and kind of see them in a different light now. Happy New Year's and uh, Lion Balls.